Well, oh, yeah, it's me again. Yeah, there's different glasses and stuff. Yes, I know it's been six months since the last video. There's a number of reasons why. Let's get into things one at a time. Now, no doubt the first thing that you notice is I have glasses with tinted lenses on. So let's get the elephant in the room straight out the way before we do anything else. Now, why have I got them? Well, for a number of years, there's been a degradation in my retinas and optic nerve. Um, part of it down to the fact that it's congenital. My brother also has to wear dark lenses, darker than mine. His are worse than mine. Part of it down to the fact sitting for nearly 30 years with two huge monitors with my nose less than a foot away. So that's the bottom line. So no doubt a lot of you will be thinking, okay, then it does not affect what you see. Well, it sort of does, but not in the way you'd expect. These glasses, what they do is, if you imagine a curve in Photoshop, well, for you it would be that way, right? A curve in Photoshop. What it's doing is it rolls off the high end, right? Keeps the mid and the low, it's very, very slightly darker, okay? So I, you know, I can see levels perfectly well. In fact, I even have to wear these at night when I'm walking about, I can see perfectly well in the dark, so nothing to worry about. When I'm colour grading, what I've done is I've created a special LUT that I will turn on when I'm doing any colour grading on video, um, that compensates for these lenses, then while well, I'm wearing them, so when I switch that off at the end, everything's fine. And I normally check it without my glasses anyway, just to be sure. So why has there been no videos for pretty much six months? Um, it's a bit of a, well, I must say a weird story. It's, it's pretty straightforward for quite a lot of people in YouTube. Now, I don't know, if it, for those of you that have been following the Life After 3D thing from the very beginning, you know, there was a lot of, most of it, it was, the idea was it was about my journey from being a 3D artist, being forced to stop because of the damage in my hands, which by the way, I made the right choice because they've got even worse since then, through to whatever comes next. And I know a lot of people are taking particular notes of this because they've either started to move away from 3D or they're starting to think, well, my job's not really safe with AI, things like that. So it was quite important for people. And... Somehow along the way, I got caught in the what does YouTube like and how can I get more views thing. It's quite common because these videos don't get a lot of views. If one of these gets 100 views, it's doing well, okay? So I thought, you know, okay, well, let's try some sort of things that are happening in 3D as well as stuff about me, right? And the stuff that worked was the AI stuff. So I started doing more videos on AI and protecting against AI and... I felt I was being strung on by the algorithm to only cover the latest AI news. And that is not what this series is about. Now, I'm not saying I might not cover it at some future point, but that's not the main reason for these. It never was. So I felt I needed a bit of a break away from things for a while and recenter myself and work out what I wanted to, you know, what I wanted to cover. Because let's face it, I've got a rather eclectic skill set. As well as being a 3D artist, I'm a musician, I'm a filmmaker, I've been a programmer, I do loads of things, right? So sometimes it might be videos like this, sometimes it might be short documentaries I'm making, like there's one that's due either before this or shortly after it, um, that I've been filming, but eight minute documentary. Sometimes it'll be me playing, or a music video, or me just jamming on. It's, it's just, it's the things that I'm doing, right? This is the whole point for this channel. And although I do have other channels, like the one for Blue Beer Productions, which I do urge you all to go and subscribe to, that's where all the documentaries and music videos, the old music videos for other people and stuff for other people go, right? All the fancy stuff from the production company. That doesn't, obviously doesn't have as many subscribers as this one does. It has about, was it 3.5 or 3.7 million subscribers? Not million, thousand. I wish it was 3.7 million. If I'm going to get any traction on something, it makes more sense to put it on this channel as well. What hasn't really helped is my hours um, at the university, because I lecture for the University of Forfeiture um, in, in Masters in Game Art and Design, have done for years. Those hours went up a lot, and about four times the amount of hours I was doing at the end of August, right? So at the mid end of September, it suddenly quadrupled. That took a lot of my time and it still does at the moment so it's quite difficult finding the time when i've got a house where my child is not lying on the sofa behind me 
when I can spend in a half an hour rearranging the room so that I can set the lights and the cameras up and also not be tired enough so that I've got eyes down here somewhere so that's part of the thing I'm going to try and keep on top of that now one of the moves I've done with that is I've bought a new set of lights uh, newer LED panels there's a green one going for the background there there's the key light up there they're both battery operated with with two large batteries so it makes it a breeze setting up in fact technically I set it up in the middle of a forest at night not that I'm going to do that but I could also what's not helping and I know not many people know this but I've suffered from insomnia my entire life from being a small child and it goes in these sort of one and a half to two, two and a half year cycles. And from about October last year, it started to hit the wrong end of the cycle. So that means that no matter what, I can't get to sleep before 4 a.m. That's it. That's the soonest. The only time that changes is if I go out and have a drink. Obviously, you can't do that every time you need a night's sleep. Otherwise, you're going to end up in problems. So it means then that once my daughter goes to school, I've got to have a nap for a couple of hours just to be human, to function. Now this could go on for eight or 10 months or more. So I've, it's not my first rodeo with it, but it does mean that eats into another large section of the day. And meaning by the time I'm finished, everybody else is closed. The shops are closed, people are at home relaxing, and it's very hard to do stuff and get interviews or things like that. It's why the one I've been doing for Steel Time Music it took me six months to get the b-roll because every time i was free they were closed so we forgot there in the end that one is about steel line music and matt connor at steel line music is a very interesting man uh, the shop has a very interesting story behind it and it there's some really good sort of angles you can get but when you're filming anywhere that's a small location it makes it harder because there's less stuff right and any angle you get is a good ch you know, chance that stuff from the other shot in the b-roll is behind so it, it's it is somewhat limiting but i think it's some of them the best stuff comes from when you have limitations those of you that haven't seen the my documentary that i was my first directorial debut on a proper thing not for burning uh, have a look it's on youtube now i didn't submit it currently for any film festivals i might do the reason behind it was that as many people as possible got to see it for the stop the concert incinerator being built which is currently going through its latest stages right now in court where their project genesis are now suing the government because of course they are because they're bastards so that's all going on as well if you haven't watched it go and give it a watch even if you're not from the area you'll find it a really interesting watch and very engaging we are approaching the two-year anniversary of like life after 3d the first one was recorded two years ago on the 22nd of February, which also happens to be my brother's birthday. He's 49 this year. So I am going to do one for them. Now, whether it's a full production like this with the lights or something special, I don't know yet. I haven't made my mind up. Don't know. It, whatever pops up my head, pops up my head, right? There's been a lot of um, sort of swapping out of the gear I use for different stuff and upgrading stuff. Originally, I was going to get rid of the Blackmagic cinema camera that's sitting over there. I'll pick it up, but I'll probably drop it. But now I've realized as I've had to get these large batteries, I can operate that with a battery pack. So maybe it makes sense to keep a hold of it. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I'm trying to size down things. So it takes up less room in the house because it's a small house. And I would ideally like it to, it doesn't matter whether it's me filming these or doing an interview with somebody else. Ideally what you want is the shortest time from arriving there to having everything set up. And the moment you start involving power cables, that means you need extensions. That means you're limited to how far away you can get from any power socket. You can't always get the lights where you want them. Well, this way, I can get them exactly where I need to. Unless this key light's slightly off because there's a table in the way. And I didn't really fancy balancing it on a table because I know what would happen. And anybody who saw the behind the scenes footage many years ago from when I was filming Big, Big Red Monster and an entire lightning rig came down to hit me on the head knows that I don't have the best of luck with things like that. So yeah, that's basically what's been happening for the last six months. Uh, I'm gonna try and do these as regularly as I can, but only really when I've got something to say. But I want to cover in closing about the whole thing about AI. And it's a, it's a double-edged sword because it's polarizing and i find myself in a rather i don't know whether it's unique but it feels unique position that i see both sides of the argument um it's like just last night i came across a tool that enabled me to take some of my dad's old recordings studio recordings and the backing wasn't particularly brilliant on some of them 
but now I can separate them all out into the different tracks again and I could feasibly, me and my brother, redo the entire backing to the level they should have been, right? So that's a good use of it. And there's plenty of uses of, of AI that you can make some, it's an interesting tool. Now, what do I think about people who are basically prompt monkeys? Well, again, I can see both sides of this, to be fair. Now, as somebody who's now very, very limited to what they can do with their hands, and I think Bay Rate pointed out recently that I'm like a prime example of somebody that it would help perfectly because the IDs are still up there, right? But it just needs a way to do a lot of the donkey work. But again, there's such a polarizing opinion on AI, it would be stupid of me with a YouTube channel to back that horse either way because you're going to piss somebody off. Although there's an old saying, if you're not pissing somebody off, then you're doing something wrong. So, let's see, yeah? Um, so yeah, this is me, I'm Wayne Robson, this is Life After 3D, episode whatever the bloody hell it is, and I will see you all on the flip side. Bye-bye.